Welcome back, sea turtle fans, to part two of my life as a sea turtle. The first part, part one, was an introduction leading to this, and this is uh, the actual uh, Google slide book that I wrote several years ago, and uh, we're going to get started on that. Uh, at the time I wrote it, I had a few extra names that um, kids would call me at school. So here is what Myrtle, she is our first person narrative of this story, how she met the sea turtle man. He came from Kansas City to a beach in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So we're going to talk about my group plus four others that live in the continental United States. I'm a green. We're going to learn about Leatherback, Loggerhead, Hawksbill, and Kemp's Ridley because they all nest the United States. This is my sea turtle family, and I'm Myrtle, a green sea turtle, and we're all marine reptiles, which means we breathe air, and we have to come up about every four to five minutes to breathe. Now, if I'm inactive, I can stay down for a couple hours, hanging out at a coral reef, and I slow my uh, body oxygen down. Now, when we come up to breathe, oftentimes bad things will happen. We get run over by motorboats every now and then. So it's not always safe. The nesting season is right now in North America. Started late March, early April, and goes all the way to August. The sun will rise to start a new day, and special scientists, we who are called marine biologists, drive the beaches looking for signs that I've been there or one of my cousins. But this is the actual beach that I had to find after 25 years of waiting to be mature. I will come ashore and lay my eggs I find it because of my GPS or instincts. And then I will lay my eggs and hope that it will lead to my species living another 200 million years. Interesting fact, the males never leave the water except in Hawaii. And Hawaii is special for lots of reasons. Here's an example of a female coming ashore to lay her eggs. Now, sometimes they change their minds and they go right back. And so that's called a false crawl. It's a U-shape that you can see right there on the right side. So how do the biologists know that a nest has been laid? When they follow that track, the marker, if they find a large pile of sand, they know that a nest has been buried there. So they will stake it off so people don't do a sandcastle on top. They know the type of turtle because the marker patterns are different for each of the five species of turtles that will nest here. And a group of eggs is called a clutch. Here are four different nests that have been laid and marked off. I waited till it was dark 
because it's a little safer at that time. I was preparing my nest, but I didn't like it for some reason. I don't even remember why, and I left it. I think part of the reason is I knew Mr. White would be coming down the beach, and I left it so he could take pictures for his science students. This larger part is the first depression that I dug. And this one back here, I dug with my back flippers. And I have to make sure it's deep enough for my eggs. The final step is to drop about 100 to 150 eggs into that round hole that I dug. I want it to be deep enough so the temperature will be a steady eight degree range. If it's too hot, it'll all be females, or too cold, it'll all be males. And that doesn't work when it comes to continuing our species. These eggs are about the size of a ping pong ball, and they're rubbery. If they were hard like a chicken's egg, they would crack. After my 100 to 150 eggs I've laid, I cover them with lots of sand. A messy business, but necessary. Water at last, I return to my secret life in the ocean. When my eggs hatch in about 45 days, I will never see, one, how many make it to the water and never know if I do see them that they're mine. It is a perilous time for hatchlings. They estimate that only one in a thousand will live to become a 25 year old adult sea turtle. You're going to learn some of those reasons further along in the book. Where do I go? Well, one of my favorite places is my secret world, and that's the coral reef. Our species is a pelagic species, which means we live in the shallow coastal waters, especially the coral reefs, because that's where we can find the most food to survive. The secret world. Well, I'm going to show you a movie of me, it's a short one, having fun with a video camera. My species is pretty docile. And the downside of that is we don't have any way to protect ourselves other than to try and get away from things. But when we're on shore, all we think about is laying eggs. The caption for this is, hey buddy, don't take my picture. Be sure and stay tuned right to the end because I wink at the camera and you'll be able to see it. Here comes the wink. What did you think of my wink? I like to be playful and have fun. That's all part of my life. And so, be ready for part three. It will be next. Take care now and be safe.